This is a review of my 2016 Grand Design Reflection Model 29 RS Super Light Fifth Wheel Travel Trailer. We've had this about two weeks and as soon as uh, we brought it home we've had snow in April of all times for the about the last two weeks so this is really the first nice day that we've had to come out here and take some photos of it. And I'm doing this video partly because I really couldn't find a whole lot of videos out there on the 2016 model. Uh, all I had was real short dealer videos, you know, buy this kind of a video. So I'm going to do more of an in-depth video. So it may be a little bit long, but if you're in the market for one of these, uh, you know, I should give you a good insight on it. Well, two weeks before we ran across this, I never even heard of Grand Design, which is kind of funny because uh, the factory is within an hour drive of where I live. So we went and uh, visited the factory and one of the things that Grand Design is trying to portray is that they're different than the other companies, that they pay more attention to quality and those kind of things. Well, when I went to the factory tour, I actually seen some evidence of that, but also I seen some evidence as RV business as usual. And that really follows through here with uh, our coach. I see some things I like, I see some things I really don't like. So uh, we're going to start the review here. And uh, we'll just give you some information of the coach and we'll give you a little bit of information the, about the company as we go on. This will give you a little more of a profile view of the uh, coach. It's known as the Model 29 RS. It is 30 foot 11 inches long, 12 foot high, and about 8 foot wide. So it's uh, about the same size, maybe a foot longer than our old Class E motorhome was. However, there's a lot more room in it. It also has three slides with a unloaded weight of 8,700 pounds and a GVWR gross vehicle weight rating of 9,995 pounds. So that gives us about a 1,250 pound give or take cargo capacity, which I thought was going to be enough when we first bought this. But if you add uh, 50 gallons worth of water, you know, you're taking 400 pounds or so off that. So we have to be a little bit careful on how much water we carry. And the primary reason we bought this size was not because of it being lightweight, because we have plenty of truck to haul this thing. The primary reason is we do a lot of state park camping. And with state parks, if you get too big, it's really difficult to get in. So I wanted something in the 30 to 32 foot range. And if you look at all the different manufacturers, anything in a 30 foot range is going to be so-called lightweight, designed for half ton, towable type vehicles. So the first thing we have are slam latch basement here. So we'll open this up for you. And there are magnets on the top, so the thing really holds pretty good. If you look under here in a lot of RV manufacturers, you'll just see nothing but a mess. And they've even taken the uh, sewer pipe from the front sink and moved it down uh, line so that you don't have a vertical pipe in the middle of your storage, which other manufacturers uh, seem to have. Now, continuing over here, we've got a battery disconnect. And then on the back wall, we have a light, which I have off now because when I turn the light on, it really messes up with the exposure of the camera. But this is a motion sensor light. So as soon as you open this uh, hatch up, it'll turn the light on. And uh, also we have a 120 volt GFCA protected outlet and a couple of uh, coax uh, TV outlets. And they uh, feed through the bottom here through a port. Now, one thing you'll notice on this RV is that there are no electrical outlets on the outside. They're all protected inside of a storage bin like this. Now, one thing we noticed on the slam latch is, and it may be a little hard to see there, but on the very end, it's a little bit bent. So when you close it, it doesn't quite fit flush right here. It kind of sticks out. That, to me, is a workmanship issue. In front of that compartment is one of the two propane tanks, 30-pound propane tank on both sides, which is fairly typical. And as we come around uh, to the front side, and if you open uh, the front here, this is the front storage compartment, again, with another motion-sensing light. This is the only place where you see any exposed wiring. And these knuckleheads that the dealership, instead of running the cables through the little cable holes, 
they they couldn't get it down because the they didn't run they didn't even bother to route the cable so they put one screw in here i tell you these rv dealers are about the worst that, when it comes to anything quality i mean it would have taken them 30 seconds to put that in especially since they charge money for prep this is what you get for, uh, from a dealership so my advice is if you can fix it yourself fix it don't take it to the dealer because they'll mess it up or they'll do shoddy work anyway on the front side uh, we do also have a solar panel connection so that you can charge your batteries if you desire to. Oh, now we're on the other side of the coach and it's maybe a little easier to see. Uh, cool thing here is on this uh, slide out, bedroom slide out, nice little LEDs there, kind of a night light, so you don't hit your head on that, but I'm 6'2 and this, I'm underneath that. Here we have another door for propane tank and this is where the switch is to switch tanks. Another slam latch on this side, and this is known as an all-season coach. So all the two gray tank and blank tank flush handle valves are here. City water connection, fresh tank flush, and then there's a series of valves here that, depending on if you want to do dry camping or fill the tank, city water, winterize, or sanitize, you flip these around. And they've upgraded the standard outside shower with this little gizmo, which you attach this hose to. And cable TV inlets here. And also here's another power outlet and also another feed through at the bottom. So again, there's no uh, power outlets outside. Also here we have a ground control 3.0 controller auto leveler which levels the front jacks as well as the rear jacks. So there's no manual cranking or anything required on this. We also have another motion detector light. And again, a slam latch, 50 amp cord. Uh, these are all wired for 50 amps. And that's designed um, so that uh, it's pre-wired for a second air conditioner up front. And down here is the uh, sewer connection. And again, ground control 3.0 uh, jack levelers. And we have two opposing slides on the back side. Here's a storage location for your sewer hose, as there is no bumper. We do have a receiver hitch, but this receiver hitch is designed only for things like bicycles or a little platform. Uh, you avoid the warranty if you exceed 300 pounds on this hitch, and or you avoid the warranty if you try to tow anything with it. And coming back around to the curbside again, uh, we have what I like to call a man cave. Which consists of a TV and a refrigerator and a little storage space. And again, another outlet. Also, this is another fit and finish trim issue here. I mean, the uh, slide out is, I can feel the rubber... I can feel the rubber behind here, the slot is all the way in, and it just does not look quite right here. Okay, we have nice aluminum steps here, and if you can see, in below it there is a nice little night light, and we have LED lighting up on the uh, awning, so let's go inside. Now the slide outs are in at the present time, and we have our panel here. I'm going to turn the ceiling lights on, and I'm going to open the slides. So here we are on the uh, inside in what I like to call the salon or the living area. Uh, solid surface countertop here. We have a large farmer sink, I guess you'd call it. Uh, stove, refrigerator, microwave, eight cubic foot uh, refrigerator. Uh, and as we come along here, we have a uh, TV entertainment center, uh, stereo, and it seems like common equipment nowadays, a uh, fake fireplace. Although it's nice because it has an electric heater in it, so you can use the campground's electricity instead of your propane. A nice plush couch. It is very, very comfortable. Much, much better than what we had in a jackknife sofa in our old RV. And this opens up into a camper queen. And then around here, uh, they call this theater seating, which is a, a dual recliner. 
now we have a dinette rather than a booth which was a biggie for us and then over here we have a hutch and as we walk forward up into the bathroom area here's something that uh, was kind of that that actually happened after we got home it wasn't that way at the dealer so the 50 mile trip on the way home just kind of snapped that I think what's the matter is down here I think it's a little bit too long so it had some some uh, bow in it so all I got to do is trim that a little bit put a little glue on there and I'm done we've got uh, maxi fan control and we also have our Dometic air and heat control and then in the bathroom we have an RV sized uh, sink an RV sized toilet and a fairly nice uh, wraparound shower and then here and here we have part of the bedroom slide that goes into the bedroom although we have a little pocket door that can close the bedroom off from the bathroom and that gives us this for uh, towels and things uh, nice little small vanity here they did give us an extra towel ring and a, a toilet paper holder but they didn't install them so I guess they expect you to install them uh, again motion sensor light up here and this is a little slightly cheaper um, vent powered vent now we're in the bedroom in the bedroom this is a full-size queen bed accent lights on both sides and two more closets we've got a full length closet here and a closet with a drawer here of course this one this closet drawer is mine this is my wife's and uh, in the bedroom we have a spot for a third TV and up here we have a vent with no fan it's funny you go in the living room and it has a nice expensive max air fan but you come up here in the bedroom and has a very cheap vent without a fan in it again I will give them a little bit of a mulligan on this because this is prepped for a second air conditioner and if you did a second air conditioner you'd put it up here anyway so I guess they're thinking why put something expensive in here when most people or at least some people will probably swap it out anyway so okay I can buy that and this does also have underbed storage and you just lift up and assign gas shocks now this is one of the things that sold me just another one of the many things actually that sold me on, on this grand design is that you go to most RV manufacturers and you pull up their underbed storage and it's a mess you know there's exposed wood which I guess isn't a big deal but you know you might see wires in here and all that kind of stuff I mean look at the attention to detail that they went through in this pedestal I mean that is something that you don't never see if they go to that much trouble with attention to detail it looks pretty good to me now just to kind of give you a little rundown on Grand Design it was started by three executives that actually ran Keystone and Keystone sold to Thor uh, several years ago and these three executives when they moved over they just did not like the corporate environment things were too restrictive for them to make changes you know it seems like the answer was always no and so on and they had to deal with stockholders and things so they really couldn't innovate much in the RV industry so they sold their interest in Thor they had to sign a non-compete agreement for a few years and three four years ago is when uh, that agreement expired so they took their money out and started Grand Design so they've been in production for about three years now three years is not a long time for you to determine whether or not uh, things are any good or not however they do have a three-year structural warranty which basically means the box and so no other RV manufacturer that I'm aware of has a three-year warranty uh, some have a two-year warranty several brands do nowadays but I have not seen a three-year warranty yet so take it for what that means my overall impression of this is I'm kind of liking what I see although I'm seeing a few things where they could still make some improvements uh, some of the fit and finish issues I see but again you have to have reasonable expectations when it comes to an RV because as I always say you know an RV is nothing more than a glorified tent so be that as it may I mean you're gonna take this thing and bounce it down the road you know things are gonna happen so uh, just keep that in mind 
But overall, I mean, this, this RV is, like I say, is about one foot longer than our Class C was, but we have tons, tons more space in here simply because of the opposing slide outs in here, the salon, and also because you don't waste any room with a cab. I think we'll really enjoy this. I think we're actually going to get more use out of this than what we would uh, our Class C, even though our Class C we, we did use quite a bit. We used about 70 nights a year. And I expect to use this about 120 nights at least. So that's basically my review. Uh, as time goes on, you know, I'll be making some, a few modifications and updates and things and fixing a few things, and I'll make some videos on those. So I just want to give you a before shot of, you know, the RV is, it came out of the factory before I make any changes.